This is the new two-row Grand Cherokee Trailhawk, which means it's the most capable Grand Cherokee you can buy today. And we'll test it through Road America's off-road course. But reality is over 90% of people will never need to take it through more than just a grassy field. So let's talk about how it is on the road first. Where we're going to start is with the oldest part of this Grand Cherokee, and that is the engine. What you have here is the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, which is called the Pentastar. It's been an icon in Jeep's lineup, but icon also kind of means it's been around a while, it's been around the block. Uh, you can also get a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated Hemi V8 in this Trailhawk or the 2 liter turbocharged 4xe. The Pentastar engine is fine. It makes 293 horsepower and 260 pound-feet, but it's just the word that I'd use to define it, is fine. It's not very fuel efficient, it's the least powerful engine option here, and it doesn't particularly sound very good. If it were my money, I'd spec the wonderful 4xe system we tried in the Wrangler last year. Now, no matter what engine option you go for, you will get eight gears in this thing. Interestingly enough, it's not the same eight gear that you would get in the V8 that you would get here in this V6. But what you're interested in is hearing how smooth it is. And there is a sport mode in here which will hurry up gear changes and will sharpen up your throttle response. But this is, of course, not a sports SUV. Overall, what I would say if you leave it in auto is it's pretty smooth. There is some weird mannerisms, really low speeds when you're turning around where the car is in auto, so it's trying to predict what you want from it. And if you give it a little bit more throttle to get this thing going, it thinks that you want to do a launch, which is, of course, not really what you want to do when you're in a parking lot. From there is where the Grand Cherokee starts to offer a more robust off-road suite than so many other unibody SUVs. You've got a true 4x4 system with a low-range transfer case, and we'll get into that more on the off-road. But what you have on the road is the confidence of a full-time four-wheel drive. When it comes to suspension and ride, what we have here is what Jeep calls their normal duty suspension, which is exactly how it feels on the road. It's not as stiff as something like the Bronco Wild Track that we've seen with the super aggressive Bilstein off-road, uh, you know, tighter dampers. Those work really well off-road, but on the road, they're kind of a pain. What we have here, at least if it's in my opinion, it's a great balance between the stiffness that you would want to not fall over in a corner, but also the softness and compliance that you would want for a nice, quiet, relaxing ride. But one thing that's worth mentioning with the ride is you do have all-terrain tires here. There's those Goodyear Wrangler tires. Um, usually, those will be a liability on high-speed corners. They've been relatively fine in my experience this week, and they'll also usually be quite a bit louder, especially at higher speeds and on the highway. Now, Jeep has done a really good job at isolating this cabin, bringing in a lot of sound deadening. So what you actually end up with is something that's very quiet, very relaxed, for something this capable off-road. It's a very nice ride given the tires and generally higher ride height. The vehicle will squat down with the air suspension at highway speeds and it all works together to be a very pleasant experience behind the wheel. What's not as pleasant is the unpredictable nature of the autopilot depending on how you cancel your cruise control. The radar may or may not re-engage. And then the active lane centering isn't spec'd here, which I would want if it was my car. But anyway, that's enough on the road. Let's hit the trails and put this thing in its element. Thanks again to Road America for letting us use their course once again. Um, we're going to put this Grand Cherokee Trailhawk through the forest, uh, over the hills, and one of our favorite obstacles gets an upgrade this year, so we'll check that out when we get there. The forest section is where the slightly shorter wheelbase of the two row makes this Grand Cherokee a bit more agile. It gives you more options in terms of lines, you can avoid sharper rocks better, and so on. We can easily get through this in four high, but I've got the rear diff locked up for added traction. All said and done, this was pretty easy for this thing. Now onto the hills. All right, we're gonna do the hills now, so we're gonna air the suspension out, we're gonna try the low range, and we're gonna try hill descent. Let's see how she does. The first hill is super easy from a technical perspective, but having the front facing camera on, which is available from the off-road pages, really helps keep the car lined up while blind cresting the hill. Approach angle is 35.7 degrees, breakover is 24.4, and departure is 30.2 degrees with a max clearance of 11.3 inches with the air suspension all the way aired out. End of the day, these hills were cake for the Trailhawk. And now, onto the moguls. 
as we get to the mobiles here, we're gonna do the same settings, except we're gonna add the sway bar disconnect for maximum articulation. Let's see how it does. The moguls are fun and a good test to look at the suspension and articulation. The Grand Cherokee is the only vehicle in this class to offer disconnecting sway bars, which allows for more wheel travel and less load to be taken through the unibody chassis. No flex and no problem here, so let's step outside. Okay. So behind the wheel, this thing actually does a really good job having that split personality between the off-road capability that would come with the Trailhawk name and the on-road comfort of the unibody architecture of the Grand Cherokee. The interesting thing to me though, when you look at this thing, we had the Summit Reserve in the GCL, the Grand Cherokee long wheelbase, or the three row version. And a lot of the aesthetic changes are actually more significant than I thought that they would be. And a lot of that comes with the Trailhawk package. You have a revised front bumper to uh, maximize your approach angle. Same thing with the rear bumper and your departure angle. Uh, of course, up front here, we have that revised fascia that we're talking about. Still seven slat grille, still Jeep. A lot of this is coming with the Zenith silver or silver, uh, but you have the black accents along with the red. If you don't like the hood decal, it serves a purpose. When you're cresting over or you're going over a hill or something, you get a lot of reflection, especially off the silver paint or like a white paint that can blind you or distract you. You do have that front facing camera, so it is helpful in that way, but this kind of takes a bit of that glare off. So it's easier to see when you're cresting. Again, Jeep logo up front, red and black accents. You've got your red tow hooks up front, signifying that this is the Trailhawk. Of course, if this was the four by E, those would be blue. Radar detectors up front in your fascia, full LED headlights with an uh, orange, uh, um, I guess running light, it would be around the side. Of course, you have plastic wheel arch cladding, which makes sense since this is the off-road version. You've got Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires wrapping around your 18-inch wheels. I think they're either 18 or 17. I'll check that down there. Uh, the nice thing about Jeep is they always give you Easter eggs, right? So they have uh, the little Red Willys original Jeep logo uh, in your wheel arch. Of course, there's a little Easter egg in the back window as well. On your front fender, you do have the trail rated certification 4x4 thing, uh, which of course makes sense, this being the most off-road capable Grand Cherokee that you can buy. Interestingly enough though, above the wing mirror, or I should say, with the wing mirror and above, everything is black. A pillars, B pillars, C pillars, Ds, uh, the roof rack itself, or roof rails, I should say, everything is blacked out. So this, like right below the belt, it's all Xena silver down and all black up. Of course, on your front door, you have the red and black Grand Cherokee with the American flag facing the proper way, as has been explained in all of the Jeep commercials. Around the side, though, it's a pretty simple profile. You have a pretty hard belt line or body line across the, um, just in tandem with your door uh, handles. You have a floating roof design in your D pillar, and then you have the wraparound LEDs. They're not full width, but there is an accent piece that goes the full width of the tailgate. You do have the Jeep uh, red and black accented badge in the back as well. And then on the back, it's pretty simple. You have your Trailhawk badge on the right. You have your four x four, again, black and red. And then you have another recovery hook, which is red uh, on your rear bumper. And like we said, the rear bumper has been revised to allow for that maximum departure angle. And the exhaust has been tucked up underneath to maximize that angle as well. So with that, I think let's jump inside. Okay, so on the interior here, you can tell that this trim is designed to be more rugged as opposed to the incredibly plush interior that we had on the Summit Reserve three row that we tested a while back. You get a lot more scratchy plastics, uh, specifically on your center console where your infotainment starts to meet uh, your drive selector and then your center bin. I hit my knee on here a lot. It's pretty uncomfortable. Um, there is a good amount of piano black, especially when you close the wireless charging compartment, but ultimately, the stuff that you interact with all the time, your steering wheel, um, you know, the, the door handles, it's all decent materials. You have leather, uh, leather wrapped steering wheel, red stitching, trail hawk embossments, and you know, kind of plastic work. Uh, you do have a heated steering wheel. The seats are very good. They're like an Alcantara leather mix. They hold you in place really well. They are heated and cooled. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that you interact with most of the time is very nice. There is no head-up display, but you do have a super big, very good uh, digital cluster. You have a lot of customizability in there. And of course, this is a Stellantis vehicle, so you can change your radio stations um, right underneath your paddle shifters. So uh, song adjustment on the, on the left and then volume on the right. Uh, it takes a minute to get used to, but once, once you're used to it, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty intuitive. One thing I will say though, since they've freed up the, the steering wheel, you do have, of course, your, 
your driver assist settings here on your wheel. So you have your adaptive cruise. There is no lane keep assist on this model as spec. Um, the one that we tested on the Summit Reserve had it. It was very good, so I'm wondering if it's a fluke because my experience with this adaptive cruise has not been stellar. Um, it does a weird thing when you cancel, depending on how you cancel um, your, your cruise control, when you re-engage it, it may or may not activate the radar sensors. It'll tell you, but if you're not paying attention and you're just assuming it'll work, you may have a bad time. So just be careful and aware of that. Again, maybe it's a fluke because the other one was very, very good. Another thing talking about some weird mannerisms with the technology is you do have a 10 inch Uconnect 5 screen. Uh, it's pretty good, it's responsive, but I did get some weird connection issues. You know, I've been living with this thing for a week. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, but I've only gotten it to work like twice. And even then I have to go to Bluetooth and then sometimes Bluetooth doesn't re-engage automatically when I get out or back into the car. So again, maybe it's a weird thing, but it, you do have fail safes right underneath for USB or USB-C, whatever you want to do. So maybe it's just me. And then of course with that, you do have a wireless charger right there. Uh, then you get into your, your drive mode selector. So on your left, you have drive modes uh, and on your right, you have your ride height control, the center uh, spinny dial is of course your, your gear. You have four low button that we've tested as you saw, uh, sway bar disconnect and crawl control or cr off-road cruise control. You do have dual water bottles or water cup holder here. Uh, they are not big enough to fit the water or the downshift water bottle of truth, which is a bit of a bummer, but they are good enough where you could put an extender in there. And then in your center bin, you have a dual opening, but neither of them weirdly have like a charger in there. Again, it's not necessary because you have four chargers right in front of you, plus a wireless uh, charger and a 12 volt, I should say. So it's not like you're lacking charging, but it is odd that there's not any, you know, support in there. This does have the big pano roof upgrade. That's like 1700 bucks just under. Uh, it's really nice, brings a lot of air and, you know, sunlight into the cabin. Um, the rear seats are very big. They're very comfortable. You get chargers, you get sunshades, you get heated seats back there. You get 115 volt outlet. It's a really nice place. It's totally big enough for me at 6'1 to sit behind myself. Uh, and you have all of the amenities that you would want. Of course, those manual sunshades are super nice. Um, and then when we talk about the trunk, it's big, it's very usable. The floor does seem a little bit high, but of course this has the air suspension so you can lower the car uh, to load stuff in and out of the trunk if you would like. But I think that's probably a good time to wrap it up and talk about the final thoughts on this Grand Cherokee Trailhawk. And that's the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk two row. There were a couple technology glitches that troubled me, but a lot of these things can be fixed with over the air updates or with a stop to your local dealer. Overall, the thing really impressed me for the way it was able to balance such strong off-road credentials with impressive on-road manners. For just under 60 grand as tested, sure, it's a lot of money, but you're also getting a lot of SUV. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you'd take this over a 4Runner, and we'll see you next one.